Hello everyone, it's Thumper the Rabbit Rabbit, and uh, I'm actually streaming on Twitch, but recording this at the same time. This is a interesting build. <laughs> a request from uh, Malcolm was looking for a solution to having a day-night timer in a cave base where there is no visibility of what things look like outside. But uh, on vanilla, you typically don't have mods that tell you what the game clock or time of day is. So his uh, question was, can you set up a timer that shows you how many minutes are left in daytime and how many minutes are left in nighttime so that while you are sequestered in your cave base, you can still keep track of whether it's day or night and how much time is left. This was a little challenging because instead of just having it count up for 45 minutes during the day and 15 minutes at night, uh, he wanted to have the timer actually count down, which requires having some circuits here that will actually trigger the decrement counter and the increment counter. So there's a whole lot going on here. Uh, this is a not novice build, so I'm not going to explain the components here, I'm just going to explain the build, and if you don't know the components, uh, go check out my component guide. So the two key components here are this display, which is going to count itself up to 45, and then this display, which is going to count up to 15 during the reset cycle, and then we're going to switch over to a new timer that decrements this counter once every minute. 45 minutes and then decrements this counter once a minute for 15 minutes and that is your countdown for day and night and then the whole thing is reset by this input right here I can hit either of these but this represents solar power at the solar power coming in so when sunrise hits and this gets enough power uh, one unit of power would be coming in here it'll trigger this reset timer. So here's what happens when you trigger reset. That reset resets this counter and this counter to zero and this memory cell to off or reset the zero position and sends the power into this one second timer. This one second timer is good old fashioned rusty clock and it's one second increments are being split out to both timers to count them up. The 15 second timer's output, when it hits 15, turns on a blocker to its input or its increment so that it stops at 15. And when this guy hits 45, or right now I have it set to 46, its output is gonna change clocks from this count up timer to this count down timer which normally would be set to one minute, but for this demonstration is set to one second. So pretend we're on one minute intervals right now. It sends its output to this memory cell, which starts as inverted, powers this branch. This branch starts a 45 minute timer, but continues to let through one minute pulses here. They won't affect the timer because it's already running. These one minute pulses here will then send power over to here every minute counting that timer down until this 45 minute timer expires at which point it'll open up this blocker swap the memory cell over to this branch which is the nighttime timer and the same process happens here 15 minute timer one minute pulses to count from 15 down to zero and at the end of this 15 minutes it actually opens this blocker to reset the memory cell back to inverted, so it's waiting for the solar panel to hit again to reset the whole thing, and it restarts. There's a bunch of tricks in this one. Some are going to be obvious, some are not. Uh, the three outputs from the reset reset the counters to zero, and also come down and set this uh, memory cell to... Uh, zero or off, we're using this flip-flop to change from the one second count up to the one minute countdown process. That's all this does. And it does it when this hits its target value of 45. We're using this flip-flop to switch from the day timer to the night timer, and it gets triggered 
by the daytime timer. So this is the countdown for 45 minutes um, in an actual clock. <laughs> and this is a countdown in one minute ticks to visually represent the status of this clock. Since you can't see the value of this, that's what all this pulsing here is doing, is giving you a visual representation of this countdown timer. Uh, you wouldn't think you would need a timer over here, but I uh, learned the hard way tonight that if there's no power to a memory cell, you can't reset it. So I'm using the 15 minute uh, nighttime timer, uh, not just because this one will count down to zero on its own and just stay at zero and just keep ticking at zero, which really wouldn't matter. Um, but you need this to know when that's done counting so that you can open this blocker and reset the memory cell back to zero or off before you start the whole thing over. Otherwise, it'll start with the night timer and that's not what you want. You want to start with the day daytime timer again. Uh, everything coming in along the bottom here is commodity power. Uh, I'm doing it off of a bunch of different solar panels and some here, but um, that doesn't really matter. All of these coming in across the bottom are commodity power with the exception of this switch, which would be ideally your solar panel that's facing east so that as soon as it gets daytime, it resets this. And then you've got 45 seconds for it to count up the counters to their target value. And then it starts your daytime timer. So I'll leave this um, to you, Malcolm, to play with the... Uh, finesse of these timers on your actual vanilla server because it may or may not be exactly 45 and 15 minutes there and I've learned that when these timers are running on one or two second intervals they actually go fast so these counters actually reach zero before the timers expire it seems to be more accurate the longer it is so if you're running this on a one minute interval then the counter will probably be very close to the actual time but when you're running it at one second, they do run fast. So for everybody out there who's using the rusty clock to count up hours, minutes, seconds as a clock to try and time when the last time someone triggered a trap or was in your base or whatever, uh, it's wrong. <laughs> it's actually going to show you more time than is actually passed because it runs fast. So be aware of that, or at least it is on this server I'm building on. I imagine on any one server it could run slow because I've seen laggy servers where this thing hangs for seconds at a time as the whole server lags out. So you know what do you expect? It's rust. It's going to be laggy. So expect it to be laggy. Uh, so all commodity power coming in along the bottom. Three resets are for the displays and to put this memory cell back to zero. This memory cell gets reset by the expiration of the 15 minute timer because there's power coming into the blocker and as soon as this timer uh, expires and there isn't power to the blocker anymore, it'll reset the memory cell back to zero. Again, visual bug here. This is actually reset now even though the bottom light didn't turn red. Um, it's rust, it's buggy, deal with it. The XOR switch here is necessary because I want to make sure that we've switched from this timer to this timer before we uh, try to set this to on. So, or because uh, this has to expire to open this blocker to set it to on. But we need power here. So I've got commodity power on the one side to provide the power and I've got this power coming from a branch coming from the inverted side of this memory cell. So while this is running, this has power to block, and when this activates, it'll actually work. Uh, without that, it uh, doesn't work. <laughs> so, uh, the only other thing you gotta keep in mind is each of these branches have has to have enough power to power the things down line from it. I don't think I've customized any of these. Let me check. They're all at two. Let me make sure they're all at two. That one's at three. I don't think it needed to be at three. I was just troubleshooting because it needs 
one for this and one for this, so it should work with two as well. So yeah, those should all work on their default values. So I'm gonna step back, take it all in, go reset it really quick. So this video is already super long already, I'll just let it run for another two minutes so you can see the whole process execute here. That's timer one on the one second intervals, counting it up. 15 second timer stops and turns itself off when it hits the target value of 15. 45 minute timer. Actually, I think I have it set to 46 right now, so it'll start with a value of 45. Otherwise, it'll start with a value of 44 as soon as it ticks over the first decrement. See if that actually works. Bam. Oh. Yeah, well, it's kind of fast there because I've got a countdown timer on one second instead of one minute. But in production, you'll want this timer at one minute instead of one second, this timer at 45 minutes, not 45 seconds, and this timer at 15 minutes, not 15 seconds. And remember, the timers are all in values of seconds, so you got to work out 45 times 60 and 15 times 60 on those two timers. That, my friends, is that. You can see, because I'm using a one second countdown, the counter, the 45 minute counter, beat the 45 minute timer by about four or five seconds. It's about 5% fast on a one second interval and about three or four percent fast on a two second interval and it seemed pretty darn close when I was trying it on uh, five and ten second intervals so I think the longer your timer interval the more accurate it's gonna be and now it's just gonna keep ticking away even though it's got nothing to do but if you have the timing set up properly the counter here should hit zero and this timer has to hit zero <laughs> uh, before you reset. So you have to make sure whatever you do that this timer hits zero and opens this to reset the memory cell before the solar panel gets light enough light to trigger the reset process. So that's going to be the key element of uh, adjusting the timing on this. If you reset before that memory cell, before this timer expires and before this memory cell resets, then on the ne next cycle it's going to start with the nighttime timer instead of the daytime timer and you're just pretty much borked from there on. So, good luck. Don't suck.